Missionary Baptist Church where Pastor Jones is not only your pastor, but in mine. And I want to let y'all know right now, I'm kind of jealous because y'all get to hear him this Sunday. I wish I could, but if y'all got CDs, I'm going to stock up with all of them. But it, it's a privilege and an honor because he's my pastor, and I, I, I thank God for this opportunity to share God's word with you. And I don't know if you do it here, but I'm going to ask if you can please thank me for the reading of God's word. I won't have you on your feet when I'm on, I promise. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. You can look at your program, you turn, look at your box, your iPad. Say amen when you have it. Say amen. It reads as thus Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. You may be seen. My subject for this morning is who can you trust? Who can you trust? I've come to understand that in order to make it in this life as a believer, in order to make it in ministry, especially as a pastor, you have to trust God. That, and I've come also to understand that when you put your trust in God, that he will bring people or place people in your life that you can trust and expose the ones you can't trust. And, and as we gather here today to celebrate the fifth year anniversary of Pastor Jones, I can truly stand before you today and say that he's a man that you can trust. Yeah, because he's a man that trusts. In God. Yeah. Are you with me so far? Yeah. And because, know that the only reason he was able to make it this far, the only reason he was pastoring for this month, the only reason he's been preaching and God has been using him in a mighty way is not because he trusted him. Not because he trusted him. Not because he trusted him himself. And not because he trusted in his education. But he made it this far only because he trusted in God. And because he trusted in God, he can stand in this pulpit Sunday after Sunday and preach God's word. Because he trusted in God, he could come here every Wednesday and teach. God's word. Yeah. Because he trusted in God, he can pray for you and intercede for you. But because he trusted in God, that's why we're here celebrating him and his wife. Today. Are you with me so far? And today I want to ask you, who can you think? Some friends that we can trust but just with a little. Then we have some we can't trust at all. Because you know as soon as you tell them something, they're going to turn right around and tell them something. Don't be changed. We all got, we all got family members. In fact, you just look straight at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at me. But, but we all know we have people like that. And if we can be honest today, church, sometimes you can't even trust yourself. just can't trust yourself and it's based on your relationship with that individual how much you trust them. Right. Right. Now let's understand we live in a world where you can't trust too many people. Yes. We live in a world where our young black men are being murdered by police who we thought we could trust. But it seems to me that everyone that wears a badge doesn't live up to that fact. Trust is 
something you don't give out free. Now, I'm not saying you have to pay for it, but it's something you earn. It's something that comes with time. It's something that's given to an individual based on their character. And it's something you only give to those you only have a relationship with. A relationship. And trust is, a, is an essential part to any kind of relationship. Because you can't say you're in a serious relationship where there is no trust. Or should I say lack of trust. As a matter of fact, you can't say you have a serious relationship with God if you don't trust him. Solomon is our writer today who was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he starts this scripture off with the word trust. Somebody say trust. Come on, talk back to me and I'll talk to you. Trust. Trust is a powerful word with a powerful meaning. And the definition of trust is an assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone and something. Are you with me? Trust also means to have faith or confidence in someone. So in other words, when we read this text that says trust in the Lord, it also means to have faith in Him. Are you with me so far? Yeah, 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 but the opposite of trust is mistrust. Yeah, yeah, mistrust means lack of trust. And mistrust is what destroys relationships. Mistrust is what destroys families. Mistrust is what destroys ministry. Mistrust is what destroys people faith to the point where they give up on God. You can't make it in this life as a believer if you have mistrust in your heart. But let's look at that word trust some more, y'all, because trust in the Hebrew is the word batak. B-A-T-A-C-H. Batak. And it means to have a bold confidence in the Lord to the point of being careless or carefree. Guess what, church? Because you know that God is in control and he cares for you. This is letting me know that once I put my trust in God, I don't have to worry no more. I don't have to worry about my situation. I don't have to worry about my circumstances. I don't have to worry about what I'm going through right now. I don't have to worry about my current condition because I know God is still in control. Because I know all things are working together for my good. Because I know that He can make a way where there is no way. Because I know with that.
to trust him wholeheartedly. That means to trust him entirely, exclusively, and exhaustively. Are you with me so far? It means to trust him in every aspect of your life. And the thing is, God demands us to trust him, but he doesn't force us. To trust him. And before I get out of your way, I just want to share some things because there's certain things that will hinder you from trusting in God. I just want to share three with you that I'm going to share with in a little while. But, but there's three things that will hinder you or hold you back from trusting in God. The first is disobedience. Yeah, disobedience. Disobedience will hinder you because how can you say you trust in God and you continue to walk in disobedience? <laughs> Understand, you can't walk in obedience in some areas and disobedience in the other. You have to walk in obedience in every I can't get a witness in this. Yeah, in every area. And when the thing, the text says trust in the Lord, to trust in the Lord also means to obey him and to obey the one he's placed over. And, and guess what that is? Your past. Hebrews 13 verse 17 says, obey those who rule over you. Y'all got to talk to me. And be submissive. So which means that when you disobey your pastor, you're not only disobeying him, but you're disobeying
brothers are saying, how is it that you are so fearful? And how come you don't have any faith? They were struggling with honor. Believe, but understand, fear gives birth to unbelief. That unbelief paralyzes your faith and your trust. Trust. Unbelief will have you feeling defeated when you already have a vision. It's our job as believers to believe no matter what it looks like that we have to get to the point where we learn how to trust God even when we can't trace God. Tells us that our Heavenly Father knows the things we have need of, uh, 
even before we yes. ask. Yes. Isn't it good to know that we serve an all-knowing God, oh, yes. an omniscient God, a God that's aware of what we're going through, a God that's aware of how we feel, yes. a God that's aware of our physical and spiritual oh, yes. condition. Oh. But not only is he aware or could, could I, I'm sorry, or conscious, but he's concerned. First yeah. Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all of our cares upon him because he cares for you. And somebody needs to know today that God cares. And here you are mad about people around you that don't care. But you have a Savior that do care. You see, you have to understand that what concerns you concerns. Oh, I wish I had a way. We can trust him because he's faithful. Yeah. I wish I had a witness in that. Yeah. We can trust him because we can count on him. Yeah. That's why he promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Are you with me? Know that God is committed to you. Even when you're not committed to him, he remains Humility. That's why the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. Last but not least, he's hating. Thank God that you have a pastor 
and a first lady that you can trust. And the only reason you're able to trust them is because they trust God. Are you with me? So right now, do you want to do that? For someone who doesn't trust God, or who doesn't know God as their personal Lord and Savior, I ask you to come. Come while the blood is still running warm in your back. Yeah. Remember, I said trust has something to do with faith. And all you need to do is take a step out on faith and watch God. Yeah. If that's you, 